to the people who live there, it is Rapa Nui. To the rest of us, it is Easter Island. One of the strangest and most haunting places on Earth. Hundreds of giant stone statues are a lasting testament to one of the most extraordinary civilizations the world has ever seen. They have left an indelible mark, not only on this island, but on our consciousness. But for years, Easter Island baffled everyone who went there. Nobody could work out who had created this civilization, how they came to build these remarkable statues, and ultimately, what was their fate? Now, at last, modern science is beginning to solve the mystery of Easter Island. April the 5th, 1722, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, two worlds collided. It must have been to them a bolt out of the blue. It must have been to them like a spaceship landing in your backyard. I mean, it was an incredible experience to stand as they did down there along the coast and see those three ships. people who'd been cut off from the rest of the world for more than a millennium came face to face with the most advanced society of the age. It was Easter Day, and so the visitors who were Dutch explorers named their new discovery Easter Island. But when the Dutch came ashore, they got a shock. An island they thought was populated by just Stone Age people contained something else. Hundreds of giant stone statues. One of the first things they noticed was these large statues standing on platforms. They wondered how on earth these people had manufactured these, how they had set these statues up. They hadn't encountered anything like this before. And I suppose this was really the beginning of the European fascination uh, with Easter Island and, and its mystery. The Dutch were dumbfounded. They couldn't see how the primitive islanders had made such huge statues. And there was more. The islanders had also created spectacular stone engravings of a strange creature, half man, half bird. And grotesque wooden carvings of people apparently starving. It was an encounter that would reverberate for hundreds of years and begin a mystery that has endured to this day. Because the great puzzle for anyone trying to find out what happened here is... There's no one to tell them about it. Today, about 4,000 people live on Easter Island. But most have come recently from Chile and from the other islands of the Pacific. So they have no memory of the island's past. Only a few fragmentary legends survive from the time of the great statues. Which means the questions the Dutch asked all those years ago are still the same unanswered questions today. Who are the people who came to Easter Island? And how did they get there? Why did they carve big statues? What do the statues mean? And there was one other question the question that was the most mysterious of all. 
Why did it all come to an end? What happened to destroy that civilization? These, then, are the questions that have obsessed scientists for years. And now, at last, they're beginning to find the answers. The first and most obvious mystery is who were the original islanders? Where had the statue makers come from? I think there's a genuine mystery in Easter Island. There's a, it's a tiny, tiny island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. If you look at the map, people could have come from either direction. Easter Island is the most remote inhabited island in the world. The nearest land is thousands of kilometers away, South America to the east, and the scattered islands of Polynesia to the west. In the 1950s, the famous explorer Tor Heyerdahl came up with his theory that the Easter Islanders had come from South America, the nearest large landmass. His Contiki expedition showed how it was possible to sail a primitive raft across the Pacific from South America to Easter Island. But it was only a theory. Others thought the Easter Islanders had come from the opposite direction, from Polynesia. For years, there was no way of telling which theory was right. And then along came Erika Hagelberg. She's a geneticist, and it was genetics that held the key to the mystery. Essentially, nobody had looked with modern genetic techniques. And the idea to be able to find out and to look directly at the genetic material of prehistoric people is a terribly exciting prospect. Hegelberg set out to look for something called a genetic marker. People from different parts of the world have different genetic signatures that can help identify their origins. So she extracted DNA from the skeletons of early Easter Islanders, searching for the genetic marker that would finally identify who they were and where they'd come from. And at last, she found the answer. A genetic marker called the Polynesian motif. It's unique to Polynesians. And that was an exhilarating finding. It was marvelous because it's, it's unambiguous. It shows that these people had to have been descendants of Polynesians. Finding the Polynesian motif proved that the Easter Islanders had come from Polynesia, not from South America. Hegelberg's discovery makes Easter Island the furthest outpost of the Polynesian people, perhaps the greatest seafarers the world has ever seen. Over 350 islands were discovered, colonized, settled by Polynesian people. It was a massive amount of watery miles that traveled under their hulls as they went from island to island. 